Hello everyone, this is Jeff Murren. Thanks for joining me. Uh, we are continuing our discussion of the Odyssey, specifically the Robert Fagel's translation of the book. And in this particular video, we are going to focus on book 22, Slaughter in the Hall. All right, so this is where it gets good. This is where um, it gets very vivid. This, vivid. this is where it gets very graphic. This is where we finally get to see Odysseus laying out justice and vengeance for all those suitors who have been there just treating his wife with disrespect, treating his son with disrespect, treating his household and all his possessions with disrespect. And this is where he sets, you know, says no more, it's over, and he just cleans house. All right. So uh, not a whole lot that I would say is very, um, uh, you know, we don't learn a whole lot here. We just get to sit back and watch the show, all right? Um, and it is pretty gory, and uh, I kind of like that. So uh, let's go ahead and jump in. I'm on page 439. Um, and uh, Odysseus, you know, he has just run, uh, you know, uh, shot those, that uh, arrow through those axes, and everybody's just like, oh my gosh, you know? And so he, it shows that he tears his uh, clothes off, and like four lines in, he screams, look, your crucial test is finished now at last, but another target, another target's left that no one's hit before. We'll see if I can hit it. Apollo, give me glory. All right. It says with that, he, he trained a stabbing arrow on Antinous. That one, that, that one who has been the worst of them all, the ringleader of this ragtag bunch of just, uh, <laughs> leeches, all right, um, and he, he just goes straight for that top man. He doesn't waste any time, all right. It says with that he trained a stepping arrow on Antinous, just lifting a gorgeous golden loving cup in his hands, just tilting the two-handed goblet back to his lips, about to drain the wine and slaughter the last thing on the suitor's mind. Who could dream of that foe? Uh, of that one foe and that crowd of feasters, however great his power, would bring down death on himself and black doom. But Odysseus aimed and shot Antinous square in the throat. And the point went stabbing clean through the soft neck and out and off to the side he pitched. The cup dropped from his grasp. As the shaft sank home and the man's lifeblood came spurting from his nostrils, thick red jets. A sudden thrust of his foot, he kicked away the table. Uh, food showered across the floor. The bread and meats soaked in a swirl of bloody filth. Ah, that's good stuff. All right. Um, and then someone yells on line 30, says, You killed the best in Ithaca. Our fine prince. Well, you know what? The best in Ithaca is right in front of him. The best in Ithaca is the one who just laid waste to this Antinous. And if he's the best in Ithaca, what hope does anybody else have? All right, let's keep going. Um, skipping a line there, it says, Groping frantic, each one persuading himself the guest had killed the man by chance. Poor fools blind to the fact that all their necks were in the noose, their doom sealed. Because they're almost like, oh, that, like he couldn't have done that on purpose. There's no way that the, then, you know, and it says here that they had no idea. No idea. Still, in denial they are that this is Odysseus and he is ready to take them all out. All right. Skipping a line. You dogs, Odysseus says, you never imagined I'd return from Troy so cocksure that you bled my house to death, ravished my serving women, wooed my wife behind my back while I was still alive. No fear of the gods who rule the skies up there. No fear that men's revenge might arrive someday. Now all your necks are in the noose. Your doom is sealed. Terror gripped them all. And it's a it's about time it did, all right? Eurymachus on the next uh, page on line 40, um, 49 says, you know, here he lies. He's talking about Antinous. Here he lies quite dead. And he, in, he in, uh, incited it all. Antinous, look, the man who drove us all to crime. Like, the, like it's, you don't need to fight anybody else. He's the one who did it. He's the one who like incited us all to do all this stuff. It's not, 
It's not our doing necessarily, okay? Like, you've killed the leader, you know, we're done. Skipping five lines says, but now he's received death that he deserved. So spare your own people. Later we'll recoup your cost with a tax laid down upon the land, covering all we ate and drank inside your halls. And each of us here will pay full measure too. It's like, okay, don't spare our lives and tax the crap out of us. And eventually, because of that, then you'll be able to uh, reestablish everything that we've just totally taken advantage of. Okay. And Odysseus says, no, Eurymachus, if you see there, line 69, now life or death, your choice. Fight me or flee if you hope to escape your sudden bloody doom. All right. So Eurymachus uh, charges the suitors to fight. Okay. It's almost like, hey, you know, we, we've got to do what we've got to do. All right. Uh, and they all, you know, have, they, they have something to say there, but on, uh, let's see, line 83 uh, on page 442, it says, Brave talk. He drew his two-edged sword, bronze, honed for the kill, and hurled himself at the king with a raw, savage cry. In the same breath that Odysseus loosed an arrow, ripping his breast beside the nipple so hard it lodged in the man's liver. All right. Uh, after that break, we see another one. Amphinomus rushed the king in all his glory, charging him face to face, a slashing sword drawn. But Telemachus, ah, it's father and son team. Telemachus, too quick, stabbed the man from behind, plunging his bronze spear between the suitor's shoulders and straight on through his chest. The point came jutting out. All right. And Telemachus runs then to get more equipment. He's like, hey, you know, let's... we. It's on now, Odysseus tells him. It's on. Go. Go to the place. Remember, because they stored um, the armory. They stored all the battlements and all the, the things that they needed away. All right? And now he's like, go get it. Go get it. We're going to arm ourselves right here, right now, and we are just, we're going to do it. All right? So the second line on page 443, he says, Off he ran to the room where the famous arms lay stored. Took, took up four shields, eight spears, four bronze helmets, ridged with horsehair crest, and loaded with these, ran back to reach his father's side in no time. The prince was first to case himself in bronze, and his servants followed suit, suit both harnessed up, and all three flanked Odysseus, mastermind of war. And he, long as he, he'd had arrows left to defend himself, kept picking suitors off in the palace, one by one. And down they went, corpse on corpse in droves. So you've got the swine herd, the cow herd. Uh, remember, because Odysseus uh, pulled them aside and said, hey, look, you know, I am him. Look, I got the scar. And they're like, oh my God, yes. Okay. So it's the two of them and Telemachus and Odysseus for them taking on all the suitors. And I think we counted 117 suitors last time. But those numbers, I mean, I hope you're good at subtraction because you're going to see that these are just going to keep going down, keep going down. And I'm not going to read all of them. I'm not going to mention every single name, but, you know, it, it is clear that they make quick work of these guys who have been doing nothing for, what, 20 years? Except eating and drinking and having other people perform for them? Maybe they're a little bit out of, out of practice in this fighting business. Who knows? Okay. So um, let's look down about one, line 130, two, three, four, five, six, about 137. It says, Odysseus gave the swineherd strict commands to stand hard by the side door, guard it well, the only way the suitors might break out. All right, making sure that there's no escape for them. All right. Um, so we've got, uh, we've got then... Uh, Melanthius, who is who's, is also a goat herd, but he's the one who always gave Odysseus, when Odysseus was dressed as the beggar, gave him so much grief, you know, was uh, violent towards him, insulted him and everything. Okay, so on line 151 on page 444, it says, uh, you know, the goat herd clambered up through the smoke ducts high on the wall and scurried into Odysseus' storeroom. Uh-oh. Bundled dozens of shields, as many spears and helmets, ridged with horsehair crests, and loaded with these, rushed back down to the suitors, quickly issued arms. All right? So, mm, 
They found a way in. They found a way into that storeroom where those battlements are, are kept, all right? It says Odysseus's knees shook, because this is not what he expected to happen, all right? His heart, too, when he saw them buckling in their armor, brandishing long spears, here was a battle looming. Well, he knew, all right? So he's like, all right, here we go. Let's do this, all right? Telemachus says, you know, skipping about three lines, Telemachus says, my fault, father. The cool, clear prince replied, the blame's all mine. That, sn that snug door to the vault, I left it ajar. They've kept a better watch than I. Go, Emmaus. Shut the door to the storeroom. Check and see if it's uh, one of the women's tricks or Dolly's son, Melanthus. He's our man, I'd say. All right. So then we see on page 445, uh, line uh, 189, you know, well, it's mentioned this is Melanthius on 189, all right? But let's say about 196, it says, quick, they rushed him, this is Melanthius, seized him, hailed him back by the hair, flung him down on the floor, writhing with terror, ter terror bound him hand and foot with chafing cord, wrenched his limbs back, Back to the joints locked tight, just as Laertes' cunning son had commanded, as they talked about this earlier, they, they strapped a twisted cable around his body, hoisted him up a column until he hit the rafters. Then you mocked him, Eumaeus. It's like the, the author here is talking to Eumaeus as if Eumaeus is part of the audience. All right, And we've seen that happen a few times uh, throughout the book. It says, then you mocked him, Eumaeus, my good swineherd. Now, stand guard through the whole night, Melanthius, stretched out on a soft bed fit for you, your highness. You're bound to see the morning rise up from the ocean. I wonder if that is a play on terms or a play on words there. Uh, mounting her golden throne just uh, as at just the hour you always drive in your goats to feast the suitors in the hall. All right. So, yeah, they bind him up and they, you know, get him. I almost feel like, you know, it's a... You know, like if you like you're hog tying somebody, you know, with with the the feet and the arms back behind, and then they take him and they hoist him up, and they say, "Well, you must have a really good view of the sunrise from up there." I'm sure. All right, I don't know. They just can't get enough of making these guys pay. And again, it's high time that they did. All right, uh, here um, Odysseus is referred to as a mastermind of war. Okay, and if you remember, you know, he was, he was successful in Troy, and it was his idea of the Trojan horse that actually won in the war. So it's his mastermind of war, all right? Uh, Athena comes to help, as she is wont to do very often, all right, about 2.15. Uh, it says, Zeus's daughter Athena, taking the build and voice of a mentor, always as a disguise, swept in, and Odysseus, thrilled to see her, or him as mentor, all right? Swept in and Odysseus, thrilled to see her, cried out, Rescue us, Bentor. Now it's life or death. Remember your old comrade, all the service I offered you. Uh, we were boys together. All right. Um, and uh, we see here that, you know, they, the suitors, threaten Athena as Mentor. All right. And they say some horrible things, and that just gets her so angry. Okay. Of course, they don't know it's Athena, but Athena is not going to take kindly to outright insults, even if they are directed at her in any form, right? So let's see here. After uh, that first break on 446, it says, Athena hit new heights of rage. She lashed out at Odysseus now with blazing accusations. Where's it gone, Odysseus? Your power, your fighting heart. She's trying to get him, you know, ready to go and even, you know, just keep that fire going within him, okay? The great soldier who fought for uh, famous white-armed Helen, battling Trojans nine years long, all right? Nonstop, no mercy, uh, mowing their armies down in grueling battle. You who seized the broad streets of Troy uh, with your fine strategic stroke. How can you, now you've returned to your own house, your own wealth, bewail the loss of your combat strength in a war with suitors? Yeah, she says, these aren't even, these aren't even soldiers. These are suitors. So let's make quick work of these guys. I mean, they, stood, they shouldn't stand a chance against you, all right? We see on uh, 447 that six suitors simultaneously try to shoot their arrows at Odysseus, but 
Thank goodness Athena is there. All right, uh, about line, uh, let's say, six, uh, 266, 267, it says, at his command, concentrating their shots, all six hurled at as one. But Athena sent the whole salvo wide of the mark. One of them hit the jam of the Great Hall's doors, another the massive door itself, and the heavy bronze point of a third ashen javelin crashed against the wall. Okay, so these, these arrows were coming straight at him, and Athena's like, nope, 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 nope. All right. Um, seeing his men untouched by suitor's flurry, steady Odysseus leapt to take command. Friends, now it's for us to hurl at them, I say, into this ruck of suitors, topping all their crimes. They're mad to strip the armor off our bodies and taking aim at the ranks, all four let fly at one and the lances struck home. And then there is a list Okay, of who killed whom, right there. Boom, 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 boom. All right, so on through, all through the top of page 448, uh, we see that, uh, you know, there's a list of all the names, okay, that um, the, the suitors that are getting laid to waste one right after another after another by Telemachus and, and Odysseus and everybody here, all right? But then we see this, uh, this is on page uh, 448, about line 308, it says, Telemachus speared Leocritus so deep in the groin that the uh, bronze came punching out his back and the man crashed headfirst, slamming the ground full face. And now Athena, looming out of the rafters high above them, brandished her man-destroying shield of thunder, terrifying the suitors out of their minds. And down the hall they panicked, wild, like herds stampeding, driven mad as the darting uh, gadfly strikes in the late spring when the long days come around. The attackers struck like eagles, crook-clawed, hook-beaked, swooping down from a mountain ridge to hairy smaller birds that skim across the flatland, cringing under the clouds. But the eagles plunge in fury, rip their lives out, hopeless, never a chance of flight or rescue. And people love the sport, so the attackers routed the suitors, headlong, down the hall, wheeling into the slaughter, slashing left and right, and grisly screams broke from skulls cracked open, the whole floor awash in blood. Mm, man. So now we run up against the bard, the one who would perform for the suitors. And I find this very interesting, all right? Uh, page 450, about, I'm going to start reading a couple lines in. The bard says, I hug your knees, Odysseus. Mercy, spare my life. What a grief it would be! Uh, it will be to you for all your years to come if you kill the singer now, who sings for gods and men. I taught myself the craft, but a god has planted deep in my spirit all the paths of song. Songs I'm fit to sing for you as for a god. Calm your bloodlust now. Don't take my head. He'd bear me out, your own dear son Telemachus. Never of my own will, never for any gain, did I perform in your house singing after the suitors had their, singing after the suitors had their feasts. They were too strong, too many. They forced me to come along and sing. I had no choice. All right. So then, so he, you know, the, the bard, the singer, the performer is begging for his life. And then the inspired prince Telemachus heard his pleas and quickly said to his father close beside him, stop, don't cut him down. This one's innocent. And I find that interesting because we've heard how much Odysseus has said, and he's praised like crazy the bard. Right. And, oh, you are wonderful in your performance. It's like you are, you know, channeling the gods or maybe a god himself or whatever on and on and on. OK, because, you know, Homer's writing this, if Homer ever did exist, and trying to make sure that everybody knows just how important and how, uh, you know, without blame the bard is going to be in this circumstance. So it's almost like he's saving his own reputation there. I find that interesting. But Telemachus goes on and says, um, you know, so is the herald, Medan, uh, the one who always tended me in the house when I was little. Spare him too, unless he's dead by now, killed by uh, Philotius or uh, Eumaeus here, or ran into you rampaging through the halls. Okay, so spare him if we haven't already in our blind rage already just laid him to waste. All right. 
and they end up, they do save him as well. All right, let's see about line four, let's say 406 on page 451. Odysseus scanned his house to see if any man still skulked alive, still hoped to avoid black death, but he found them one and all in blood and dust. So here we are, already took them all out, okay? So he says to go get the nurse, all right? Because we got to find out because we know that some of those maiden hands, okay, those other nurses who are there, some of them have been bunking down with the suitors. Some of them have been, um, you know, uh, allowing them to get away with even more than they should have been able to get away with, which was nothing to, to begin with. But, you know, some have kind of taken it upon themselves to... Um, kind of join in this uh, horrific stuff that's been going on behind Odysseus's back while he was gone, but still in front of Penelope and still in front of Telemachus all this time. All right. Um, so it says down here at the bottom, last three lines, that she, the uh, Eurycleia, she found Odysseus in the thick of slaughtered corpses, splattered with blood, filth like a lion, mm -hmm that's devoured some ox in the field and lopes home covered with blood, his chest streaked, both jaws glistening, dripped red, a sight to strike terror. So Odysseus looked now, splattered with gore, his thighs, his fighting hands, and she, when she saw the corpses, all the pooling blood. So Odysseus looked now, splattered with gore, his thighs, his fighting hands, and she, when she saw the corpses, all the pooling blood. All right. So she, uh, she says down here, about line 446 or so, she says, 50 women you have inside your house, women I've trained to do their duties well to card uh, the wool and bear the yoke of service. Some dozen in all went tramping to their shame, thumbing their noses at me, at the queen herself. All right. And Telemachus, just now come of age, his mother would never let the boy take charge of the maids. But let me climb uh, to her well-lit room upstairs and tell your wife the news. Some god has put the woman fast asleep. Don't wake her yet, the crafty man returned. You tell those women to hurry here at once, just the ones who have shamed us all along. Away the old nurse bustled through the house to give the women orders, rushed them to the king. Odysseus called Telemachus over, both herdsmen too, with strict commands. Start clearing away the bodies. Make the women pitch in too. Chairs and tables, scrub them down with sponges. Rinse them clean, and once you've put the entire house in order, march the women out of the great hall between the roadhouse and the courtyard's strong stockade and hack them with your swords. Slash out all their lives. Blot out their minds the joys of love they relished under the suitor's body, rutting on the sly. All right. So they bring the women in, the women clean the house, and then they are marched out after cleaning up the mess and they're executed. All right. Here at the very end, Melanthius, man, he gets it rough here. Melanthius, the one who has just insulted and insulted and insulted Odysseus when he did not know that he was insulting Odysseus, but it did not matter. We know about Xenia. We know about all this stuff. Line 500, Melanthius, they hauled him out through the doorway into the court, lopped his nose and ears with a ruthless knife, tore his genitals out for the dogs to eat raw, and in manic fury hacked off his hands and feet. And after that, he sends for Penelope. Man, a lot of action, a lot of blood. There's stuff I didn't even mention in here, but I hit highlights aplenty. All right. So there you go for um, book 22.
I want you to read book 23, annotate book 23, come up with your own original thoughts for book 23, and then meet me back here and I'll give you my thoughts on book 23. So uh, until then, and as always, happy reading.